And as you can see, it's very, very similar, but substantially smaller. But it has all the intuitive features you've come to love with the Galileo. And today we're going to walk you through all of those features and show you just how easy it is to set up your new Galileo, as well as how advanced it is in color screen and many other features like Bluetooth download and things of this nature, making it the latest and greatest in the Scuba Pro computer family. So here we are. We're at our menu screen. In this particular case, we haven't actually set this computer yet to Imperial, but we'll go through and do it. But I want to walk you through what you're seeing on your menu screen. You've got menu, log, and dim. So the menu, of course, is going to let you go through your menu just like it did on your G1. The log is going to let you pull the previous dives that you've done as well as your statistics. And then over here under dim, if we do a light press, I can dim the screen or I can brighten the screen. And shortly we'll show you how you can go in and set those adjustments. So let's go ahead and hit the menu button. First thing you're going to have or that we want you to notice is on the left hand side you're going to see some numbers. So the very first in our menu selection or our menu offering is going to be set one. This is going to be the O2 setting. This is going to be the most common thing you're going to change quite possibly on a, a daily uh, time frame based on if you're in the dive industry or not. You may be diving a different nitrox mix and have to change this every day. So it's number one as far as often being utilized. So we're going to come back to that in a moment. You use the down arrows, the up arrows. We're going to scroll down, dive settings, digital compass, altimeter. And as you can see, you've got a little cursor over here to the side. Warning settings, clock settings. And we're going to go to number nine, which is personalization. Let's go ahead and hit enter. In this case, we've got screen configuration is the first one. So 9.1 is our screen configuration. At the bottom, this is really cool, you can see we've got current settings. So anytime when, before you go to change anything, you can go ahead and look right here and see if you even need to go into the 9.1 personalization or if it's already set the way you would like. In this case, it's set off, classic off. So let's see what that is. So we hit enter. First thing is show profile. So I want it to show the profile on the screen during the dive, which would be the graph of the dive. In this case, I'm gonna say no. So that would be off that you saw a moment ago. I can now hit my arrow. It's going to go to screen configuration. If you'll remember, we've got light. Light is going to be the smallest amount of information on the screen, but simultaneously giving it about 25% larger numbers. So you're going to have less detail, but you'll have bigger numbers if that's what you prefer based on your vision underwater and how congested you prefer the screen to be or not be. If we hit the plus, the next you're going to see full. That's going to be the extreme opposite. You're going to have the largest amount of data, but the numbers are going to be a little bit smaller because we're trying to put a lot of information on the screen. And then, of course, a lot of folks like to go with the classic. The classic is the original Ubatec classic from the 80s, which has depth, time, maximum depth, and, of course, your remaining bottom time or your no decompression information. And that's really popular. And you can also do classic with grid. So we're going to do the arrow. And next would be the rotation 180 degrees, just like you may be familiar with if you've had one of our previous Galileo series computers. As you can see, we've got the buttons on top. The word Scuba Pro is, is written so that the diver beside you can see. If I wanted to rotate it, in this case, I like to dive it this way on my wrist using the buttons with my index fingers. If I wanted to rotate it and use my thumb, I would simply hit yes here. It would rotate the screen. I could now rotate the computer 180 degrees and the buttons would be at the bottom and I could reach across and operate them on my, on my arm or my wrist with the thumb instead of the index finger. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and leave it like this. Hit save. And now it's taken me back to the personalization, so all of those changes have been made. Language. This is already set up for English. We hit save. It's not going to say anything's changed because, as it said, it was already at the bottom. Startup picture. With the G2, you have the ability using the log track software and going to your PC or Mac, you have the ability to actually implement images into the uh, computer that would allow you to have, say, a reef fish ID course and be able to have pictures of certain fish that you were trying to identify. You could have the map of a shipwreck, or if you were doing a project with survey data, or even decompression tables, you could actually put those into the computer and it can store up to a thousand images. At the same time, we also have the ability to have a startup picture, so when it first comes on, you can have a picture of your family or a picture of you and your gear or whatever you would like. 
But again, that's, we'll get into that a little later when we show you how to use the uh, PC or Mac and put personal, more personal information into the computer by downloading it from your personal computer. Next, we're going to have units. So let's hit enter. In this case, we're already set for depth to be feet. My temperature is Fahrenheit. And of course, my pressure is PSI. If I wanted to change it, it's as simple as you see the minus and the plus. I would simply change it to bar. And now I would have feet, Fahrenheit, and bar. You could have whatever combination you want. I'm going to go ahead and move it to PSI, hit save. Again, it was already down there, so nothing's changed. And you can see at the bottom, current settings, feet, Fahrenheit, PSI. So a real quick glance of what you've got. Next, workload. Workload's going to allow you to utilize a lot of our biometrics and be able to set your workload for heart rate. You could set it for respiration. Always the lowest, always the highest, or off. So if you don't want it to, to pay attention to your, your work of breathing and such, you can turn it off. For me, I like to put it on heart rate, and I like to monitor that a lot. I think it's pretty cool using the heart rate monitor. So we're going to leave it at heart rate. Now we need to go in and set our max. And you can see at the bottom, max heart rate is a range of 140 to 220 beats per minute. In this case, I'll leave it at 180. I don't think I'm capable of getting myself to 180. But uh, let's go down and see the base. The base can go from 60 to 120. Mine's about 52 is my resting, so I'm going to leave it at 60. And in this case, I have my skin temperature set for on. You can set it for on or off. So now I've got the workload the way I want for my personal diving. And again, we're going to go down to 9.6, which is going to be show owner information. Once again, using the LogTrack software, we can come in. I can put my name, my address, my phone number, email, personal information, so that if I was to accidentally leave my computer on the boat or whatever, it would be very simple to positively identify that it's mine. But again, this is done using LogTrack and the uh, cable we showed you earlier. Next, emergency information, same thing. If I'm allergic to something, if I wanted to put in my blood type, emergency contact information of a nearest relative or any of that kind of information, I can put it in here. It would be permanently in there. Uh, anything was to happen, was to get stung or something of that nature, someone could look at the emergency information and find out if I had any reactions and, and information they needed to know to help me. Color display. So here's how we did this when we switched computers. We'd already made these changes. I would go in and hit enter. In this case, you can see that I've got green as my default. I can also go down and make it white and black. It's going to look like this. If I wanted to make it black and white, it should look like this. If you like blue more than you like green, now you notice the cursor's in blue. The framing is in blue and the detail in the bottom is in blue. I kind of like the, the, the factory green, so let's go ahead and set it back to, to our factory green. It's a nice, easy to read color. And uh, so let's let her go to sleep. So push both buttons. And now my G2 is ready for me to put it with the rest of my dive gear safe and sound in its box and uh, get ready to go diving again.